Hi, I'm Darcy Priester, an Instructional Technology Coach. In this video series, I spotlight EdTech tools and how you can integrate them effectively into your classes. Welcome back to a new episode of Tech Tuesday. In this episode, I'm ranking my favorite educational technology tools. I will warn you, Google tools are featured, but they are not the only tools on this list. I do have other favorites. So let's jump in. Starting with number nine on my list is Google Jamboard. This has become a very popular tool as a way to have students check into class or know how students are feeling about content or just in general. With features such as adding your own backgrounds and using post-it notes, this has been a go-to tool for many teachers. I love its ease of use and ability to provide collaborative activities. Moving to number eight is Google Sites. There are so many ways Google Sites can be used as a class website, sharing assignments with students, or weekly information with parents, or as a creative exploration of content, such as this Google site I created for an American history class studying important judicial cases. Sort of like a modern web quest. With some adaptation, this could be turned into a hypersite, similar to the one I showed you last year in episode 16. And last but not least, it can be used as a way for students to show their learning through online portfolios. Google Sites has added some great features in the past year, including new fonts and other ways to customize the textile and appearance. It's an incredibly versatile tool that can be used by both students and teachers. And I want to point out that while I think it's a great idea to have published sites that can be shared with the larger community, I understand that this isn't allowed in all districts. So instead of publishing sites, students can simply add teachers to the site. Coming in at number seven is Pear Deck. This tool is designed to make lectures interactive for students and an easy way for teachers to get feedback through formative assessment. While there is a free version of this tool, my district has a paid subscription, giving us access to more features. I love how Pear Deck has continued to add templates to their library and how professional they look. There are templates for every content area and specialized ones for social and emotional learning and digital citizenship. But I really like the teacher dashboard and how easy it is for teachers to share this access with co-teachers, a feature that was actively requested by teachers and granted by Pear Deck. It's great how teachers can see up to the minute responses from students and adjust as needed. Their two newest features are amazing too. Last year, they added the ability to record voice directly into slides, being able to explain instructions step-by-step -step to students or add more explanation to slides for when students are in student response mode. This year, they are adding Reflect and Review, which allows you and your students to review the slides of a Pear Deck session. Make sure to end your session first by clicking on the three dots in the teacher dashboard and selecting End This Session. Enter a name for the session and then select Save and End Session. Select Open Reflect and Review. Share the review link with students by clicking on Copy Student Link. Here you can see each of your students' responses and provide feedback. Click the drop-down menu and select a student name. Then you can scroll to see this student's responses. Your original slides are on the left and the responses from students are on the right. Select the Leave Feedback icon to add comments you want to share. Students can see your feedback through the link you provide. Watch this video to learn more. The next tool I want to talk about at number six is Flipgrid. Just like Pear Deck, Flipgrid hears teachers requests and if at all possible, makes it a reality. I am truly astonished at how this tool has changed in just a few short years. This tool is more than just a way for students to record responses and share their learning. In June at Flipgrid Live, they announced several new features coming this school year. 
You can now add backgrounds to videos as well as background music and there's new stickers and filters. The one new feature I am most excited about though is Flipgrid lenses. This feature is based in artificial intelligence or AI and will automatically place users in a scene, add transparent images, and can turn you into a new character. It has been released, but was not available at the time of filming this episode, so I'll have more information for you soon. You can still check out the recording of Flipgrid Live or check out the blog post I wrote about the new features. Both links will be available in the episode notes. I also like the shorts feature which allows users to record almost as if they were using video editing software. You can record using your web camera or record the screen, add text, emojis, filters, and so much more. Then you can download for use in another program to continue editing if you have video editing software or if you want to upload to YouTube or Google Drive or OneDrive and insert into Google or Microsoft products. Moving into my top five favorite educational tools is Wakelet. If you've never used this tool, I equate it to Pinterest for education. You can save items just like in Pinterest, either in a list or a mood board, and students can now have their own accounts as this is a COPPA approved tool. This is one of my favorite tools for providing Tech Tuesday episode notes, keeping track of resources and providing resource guides, and keeping notes and ideas from conferences. But I will admit, I don't use this tool to its full capabilities. There is so much more that can be done from having collaborative spaces where students are able to add items to creating hyperdocs. The ability to also use Immersive Reader, which I should also point out can be used with both Pear Deck and Flipgrid, makes this an awesome tool to use within your entire school community. Immersive Reader will read text out loud and translate to a number of other languages. So using Wakelet for school or department newsletters is a great way to reach your entire school community. Wakelet even has a newsletter template to get you started. I'll leave the link to this in the episode notes. At number four is Canva. I have an educator account with Canva, and if you don't have one, you should definitely register for one. I'll leave the link in the episode notes. This gives me access to so many more items that I wouldn't have with a regular free account. Most of my use of Canva is to create graphics for our school social media accounts, my social media accounts, or for a presentation. I have been starting to do more for lessons, but as I don't have a dedicated classroom, I don't use it as much as a classroom teacher. That being said, the ability to create classes and have students turn in assignments through Canva makes this so much easier. I know Canva can also be synced with Canvas, as in the LMS Canvas, but I haven't been able to try this out yet. If you've used it, I would love to hear about your experience in the comments. As far as using Canva in the classroom, it can be used to create presentations or what I sometimes do, start app smashing. Using items from Canva and then downloading and inserting into other apps, such as using the presentation template, searching for a background, and then downloading as a JPEG or PIN and using it as the background in Google Slides or Jamboard. I also like to add animations from Canva that I can insert into either of these tools too. But Canva can also be used to create infographics or logos or banners, both of which could be used in Google Sites or at the top of Google Forms. This site is still developing as an educational tool, but I think it's adding some really nice features. In spot number three is WeVideo. Of course this tool would be in my top three. While I'm not big on recommending tools that you have to pay for, this one continues to be of great value. I've used several different video editing software programs, and this is the only one I would buy for large scale educational use, meaning for K through 12. 
This is not the software you would use for TV production classes or film editing, but it works incredibly well for general use. I use it pretty much every week to create videos for teachers and students from instructional videos to training videos to blogs. I've also started using it for GIFs to show step-by-step -step instructions or to give tips on a variety of topics from tech integration to spicing up assignments with some creative flair. These GIFs can then be added to our TV announcements, presentations, Twitter, or Instagram for our school social media accounts. I've said it before and I'll say it again, my favorite part of WeVideo is the stock media. I've used this site for about six years now and I continue to find new things in stock media I didn't know were there. My second favorite tool is not exactly an educational tool, but I get so much knowledge from it, I had to include it and of course it's Twitter. I first started an educational account back in 2011 and found a great network of teachers to follow. But then I kind of fell out of it about two years later. A few years ago in my current district, we had Jeff Sewell come as a speaker for our convocation and he spoke so highly of using Twitter and it just took off in my district and I tried it again. I've learned so much in the last few years and am so grateful for the network I have built up once again. I usually check my feed in the morning and bookmark items I want to come back to or save items using the Wakelet Chrome extension. Searching for items also proves useful too. But I learn the most when I participate in Twitter chats and find new people with great ideas to follow and then I keep learning great ideas when their tweets pop up in my feed. And finally, my favorite educational tool is Google Slides, the Swiss army knife of tools. I use Google Slides for presentations, digital activity sheets, drag and drop activities with items off to the sides in the gray space, flyers, resource guides with videos, images, and GIFs, or I use slides to create eBooks. There are so many ways to use it. I go between the regular presentation size and eight and a half by 11 regular paper size. My new favorite feature is changing the master slide, which allows me to make changes such as adding items to be locked into the background or change the template by changing the size of an object, moving it or changing the, the colors. It lets me make the template more my own. Honestly though, there isn't anything I can't do in Google Slides and I turn to it more often than I do any other tool. What are your favorite tools and why do you like them? Are there any that you would add to this list? Let me know in the comments below or ask a question or tag me on social media at MsPriesterEDU. All of the resources mentioned in this episode can be found in the episode notes on Wakelet. Thanks for joining me this week and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell so you can get notifications of when I have new videos available. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up so other educators can find this video too. I'll see you in two weeks for the next episode of Tech Tuesday.